The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, makes Philadelphia brand cream cheese. The cream cheese that's been famous for quality since 1880. Delicious, creamy white Philadelphia brand is so popular, it outsells all other brands of cream cheese combined. Enjoy it often. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand when you buy. Look for the red Kraft K on the silvery package. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand cream cheese, and it's made by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. Well, one of life's most exciting adventures is being experienced by the great Gildersleeve's niece Marjorie and her husband Bronco. They bought a lot and are going to build a house and they're quite happy about it. The great Gildersleeve is happy, too, because they're building on the lot next door to him. Good morning, Bertie. Morning, Miss Gildersleeve. Where is everybody? I'm ready for breakfast. I can't get nobody around here interested in breakfast. Well, I'm here. Yes, sir. I can set my clock by you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You and the eggs are always ready at the same time. <laughs> well, you know. But you think I can get Mr. Bronco and Miss Marjorie to eat this morning? I'll answer that. No, sir. What are they doing? Same thing they've been doing ever since they decided to build a house. They're in that sprawl on the living room floor, thumbing through home magazines, looking at pictures and making figures. Well, I'll go get them to the table, Bertie. Yes, sir. The way they're neglecting food, I bet they forget to put in a kitchen. Yeah, this is a big thing to them. Hello, kitties. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Anki. Yeah, I see you're down on the floor. You must be working on your floor plan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not exactly. We're trying to decide how we can best utilize our lot. A bronco sketching where the house will be. Is that a house? Looks more like a box kite. It's just rough, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, they'll smooth out. Let's everybody go into breakfast. Bertie's waiting. Well, we have a little problem, Monkey. Oh? You see, we want the house about here. The driveway will have to go here. So I'm afraid we'll have to lose our big oak tree. Yeah. Let me get down on the floor and take a look at that. Breakfast! You coming, Bertie? <laughs> yeah, let's see now. Just so I know what's what, why don't we label these things? Oh, all right. Uh, H is for house. Yeah. Uh, D is the driveway. Mm -hmm. T, that's the tree. And I'll put G right here at the front door. G? What's that for? That's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You just came to visit us. <laughs> well, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> all right, Bertie, all right. Say, this tree is a problem, isn't it? It's going to be hard to save. Hi, everybody. Hello, Leroy. Hey, isn't anybody eating breakfast? Well, of course, Leroy. What are you doing, eating on the floor? <laughs> no, my boy, we're having a family conference. Yeah, well, let's have a conference at the breakfast table. I can think better while I'm eating. Excuse me, I know nobody cares, but breakfast is getting colder by the minute. I care, let's eat. Yeah, we're trying to see where the house should go, Bertie. I thought it was going next door. If we set the house back beyond the tree, Marge, you won't have any backyard at all. Oh, and it's such a beautiful oak. We have to have a backyard for the twins or they'll be playing out in the street. Well, you wouldn't want that. No, sir. No, I guess the tree just has to go. Okay, it has to go. Let's eat. <laughs> Which tree is that? Yeah, the big one in the middle of the lot there. Well, let Bertie see that. Bertie, did you say breakfast is ready? I don't know how a builder ever makes heads or tails out of something like this. Well, these are just rough sketches, Bertie. Bertie? Just a minute, Leroy. Bronco, what do you suppose it'll cost to remove the tree? Plenty. Oh, when I think about what it'll cost before we even get started, it scares me. Well, maybe you'd feel better if you ate something. <laughs> um, do you think we'll ever be able to manage it? No, Marjorie, don't worry. You'll have problems, but we'll work them out. Well, problems always seem smaller after you eat. Marty! Leroy, we got to work these plans out. Oh, for corn's sake. I've got to break this up. My golly, we put so much in the lot, I hate to spend the money to have the tree taken out right now. Well, perhaps you could... <laughs> Coming, Bertie! Yeah, I mean, Leroy! <laughs> well, 
Before I go to the office, let's take a look at this tree, Leroy. Pretty big tree, Unc. Yeah. I'm afraid it'll cost Marjorie and Bronco quite a bit to get rid of it. You poor kids. If it was me, I'd build a house in the tree. <laughs> Leroy, you can't ask nine-month-old twins to climb up a rope ladder. We're not raising Tarzans, you know. Hey, Unc, there's Mr. Bullard standing on his porch looking at you. You? Oh, let him look. I'm not doing anything. Hey, he's coming across the street. Hey, what a neighbor. You wonder what he's coming over to complain about this time. He probably wants to tell us where to put the house. Well, by George, we'll make decisions on our side of the street, and I'll tell him that. Oh, boy, this is going to be good. What do you want, Bullard? Uh, good morning, Gildersleeve. Good morning? Oh, yes, good morning. Good morning, Leroy. Hi. Get him. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what he's after. I understand Marjorie and her husband are planning to build right away, Gildersleeve. Yes, indeed. I was just trying to decide what to do about this old oak tree. Oh, yes. You know, I remember playing under this tree as a boy. Little Amy Sue and I. Amy Sue? Amy Sue Weatherby. One of my many boyhood sweethearts. Egotist. I have some very romantic memories about this tree. (laughs) I know what he's after. He doesn't want us to cut it down. Uh, What do you propose to do about the tree, Gildersleeve? Well, Mr. Bullard, this may come as a shock to you, but I'm having it taken out. You are? Sorry. I'm not. I'm delighted. I thought because of Amy Sue... Oh, that's all past, Gildersleeve. I'll be glad to see it out. It obstructs my view, and every autumn the leaves blow over on my lawn. I hate other people's leaves. Well, personally, I like leaves. I don't. As a matter of fact, I came over prepared to pay for having this tree removed. You did? But since you're taking care of the job, Gildersleeve, I can save my money. Money? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bullard. All we've done so far is just talk about removing the tree. I thought it was all settled. Leroy. (laughs) It isn't settled. The more I look at this towering oak with all those big leaves, the more I think we should keep it. I get it, Unc. Now, Gildersleeve, there's a And the bigger it gets, the more leaves it'll drop. You bet. It's a valuable addition to the property. Worth money. Oh, stop it, Gildersleeve. I'll make out a check. Oh, I wasn't hitting, Mr. Bullard. How much do you think it would cost to remove it? Twenty dollars? Well, I guess it'd come closer to fifty dollars. Nonsense. How about twenty-five? When you stand back and see how tall it is, it could run fifty-five dollars. Gildersleeve, thirty dollars. And then they'll have to dig out the stump. No... Yeah, I doubt if they could do it for a penny less than $60. $35? Uh, then you have to saw up all the wood and haul it away. $65. Yeah, that's right, at least $65. I'll give you $40. I'll take it. What a coward. <laughs> It's been a good day. I'm glad I cashed Bullard's check. He might change his mind and try to back out of the deal. Gildersleeve, you're quite a manipulator. Bertie! Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve. Are Marjorie and Bronco home? Not yet. Hey, look what I have for them, Bertie. What's that, money? Yeah, four new $10 bills. You'll take care of moving that tree they're worried about. Yes, sir. You donating that, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, Mr. Bullard is. Mr. Bullard? It's Mr. Bullard's money. It was my idea. Just doing it to help Marjorie and Bronco. Pretty clever the way I worked it out, too, Bertie. Yes, sir. How did you work it? Well, he didn't like the old leaves blowing on his property, and he said it obstructed his view. It was worth $40 to him to get rid of the tree. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, you're a regular magician. Well, I'll pull a little magic once in a while. Yeah, I've seen him pull rabbits out of hats, but I never saw him turn old leaves into new money. Well, I did it, Bertie. Yes, sir. That's because you're a magician. Now you see a tree over there, and now you don't. Because Mr. Gillsleeve can turn old leaves into new money. You bet. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know why you're a magician? Yes, Bertie. That's right, because you can turn old leaves into new money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Houdini couldn't have done it any better. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco and Marjorie. Well, there's a lot of hilarity out here in the kitchen. What are you cooking with, Bertie? Laughing gas? <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing because Mr. Gildersleeve said you're a fine magician. Oh? What'd he do? Go ahead and tell him, Mr. Houdini. Well, I have a happy solution to the tree problem. Oh, so do we, Mr. Gildersleeve. We can save the big tree after all. 
Uh Uh-oh. You can save the tree? Uh Uh-huh. Unky, we went back to the lot and decided we just couldn't part with it. Yeah, we found a plant in a magazine with the house built right around the tree. The house will be U-shaped, Unky. Isn't that clever? Yes, but children... Yeah, I thought you definitely decided to have the tree taken out. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, we wouldn't think of it now. Why, that tree's at least 150 years old. I'm beginning to feel older than that. (laughs) Now, what was your idea about the tree, Unky? What was my idea? Well, speaking of trees, I have to go see a man about some leaves. I'd like to keep the tree, too. This puts me in what you might call an embarrassing position. Marjorie and Bronco were so enthusiastic about the new plans, I couldn't tell them I sold their tree. Well, we just have to tell Bullard we've changed our plans. I'll return his money, so what can he say? I wonder what he will say. (laughs) Yes, Gildersleeve? Hello, Mr. Bullard. About the tree. You're taking it out tomorrow? Well, not exactly. When are you taking it out? You are, Mr. Bullard. The children have talked it over and decided... Gildersleeve, if you came over to wheedle more money out of me... No, 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 no. It isn't that at all. In fact, I came over to return your $40. Why? Well, we decided to keep the tree. So here's your money. Gildersleeve, I don't want the money. I want the tree taken out. I'm sorry, Mr. Bullard, but that's impossible. Gildersleeve, you made a bargain with me. Well, in a way, yes. We didn't sign any contract. You can't legally hold me. There's nothing in writing, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve, I wrote a check, didn't I? Well, yes, You cashed the check, didn't you? Yes, but... What did it say on the check? Well, payment in full for removal of tree. But... (laughs) 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 Mr. Bullard, it really isn't up to me. Actually, I don't have anything to do with that tree. It's Marjorie and Bronco's property. You see... So you sold property that doesn't belong to you. Well, I guess you might say, I... I... Zeke. (laughs) Now, Gildersleeve, you understand a little law, and unless you want to be sued on any one or all of several charges, you'll remove the tree. You are Mr. Bullock. You wouldn't sue me. Think of my good name. If you don't remove that tree by tomorrow night, you won't have a name. You'll just be a number. (laughs) Ha-ha! With my luck, it'll be 13. (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Like creamy, rich, smooth frosting, luscious fudge, then here's wonderful news. Now you can make perfect frosting and fudge easily and quickly without cooking. How? You do it with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. In just a minute, I'll tell you how to get your free, that's right, free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for making delicious fudge and frosting with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Frosting you make with Philadelphia cream cheese is never grainy, never too soft, never too hard. It's wonderfully creamy rich because Philadelphia brand is made with lots of fine milk and thick cream. And Philadelphia cream cheese gives you frosting that's moist and fresh tasting because Philadelphia brand tastes fresh. It's guaranteed fresh by Kraft. And Philadelphia cream cheese helps keep your frosting fresh tasting longer. You'll be delighted with Philly frosting. And you'll be delighted with the fudge you can make with Philadelphia brand cream cheese, too. It's delicious, smooth fudge you make without cooking in just 15 minutes. And it always turns out perfectly. Of course... It's important that you use genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Every silvery package of genuine Philadelphia brand is marked with a red Kraft K to help you pick the real thing at a glance. Remember, Philadelphia brand is made only by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. Now, to get your free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for delicious Philly frosting and fudge, just write to Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G... Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois.
No matter how hard a man tries to do the right thing, there usually comes a time in his life when he has to see a lawyer. Guess who's on his way to see Judge Hooker. Hi, George. It's nice to have a friend when you're in trouble. Especially if your friend happens to be a good lawyer. Hello, Judge. Well, Gildy, come on in. What brings you to my office so early in the morning? Uh, Judge, I'm in trouble. Oh? Has the water commissioner been caught diluting the water? (laughs) (laughs) Judge, this is serious. Rumson Bullard is threatening to sue me. Well, I thought he'd find an excuse sometime. Sit down, Gildy, and tell me what happened. Uh, Well, uh, Margie and Bronco wanted to remove the big tree on their lot. But they didn't feel they could spare the money. I see. Rumson Bullard considered the tree a nuisance and gave me a check for $40 to get rid of it. Splendid. That's what I thought. Then Marjorie and Bronco decided they'd keep the tree and build their house around it. Well, what's the problem? Naturally, you were too smart to cash the check. No, I wasn't. (laughs) Judge, don't look at me like that. Help me. Well, fortunately for you, Gildy, I know Mr. Bullard very well. In fact, he's a client of mine, too. I'll straighten out the whole thing over the phone. You mean I won't have to go to court? Just let me talk to Ronson. It isn't often a lawyer handles both sides of the case. <laughs> you my judge. I have to hand it to you, judge. You know your legal onions. Shh. Hello, Ronson. This is Horace Hooker. Your good neighbor, Mr. Gildersleeve, has told me about your little misunderstanding. Yeah, a boy. I thought before either of you make a mountain out of a molehill... We'd better have a friendly chat. Good thing I came to the judge. What a smoothie. Naturally, there's no intent to do wrong on the part of anybody involved. After all, you're both practical, intelligent men. Listen to that. The judge should be on the Supreme Court. Now, Robinson, why don't you just leave everything to me? You bet. What a fine chief justice he'd make. What's that, Robinson? Well, I want to be fair with both parties. I had a feeling you'd see it that way. I'll so inform Mr. Gildersley. Goodbye, Rumson. Uh, Judge, it's a pleasure to sit back and watch a fine lawyer work. What did he say? Gildy, my client says if you don't have that tree out by the night, he'll come over and chop it down himself. Judge! <laughs> Not only that, he's instructed me to file suit. Oop! Sorry, Gildy. When I need a lawyer, why do I come to an old goat? <laughs> in pretty deep when a lawyer can't help me. I guess the only thing left to do is make a clean breast of it to Marjorie and Bronco. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Marjorie and Bronco home? Yeah, they're upstairs. Have you told them yet about how you loused up the tree deal? (laughs) No. Dude, I'm going to do that right now. Good luck, Unc. Thank you, my boy. Yeah, actually, I'm making more of a problem of this than it really is. When I tell Marjorie and Bronco that Bullard will sue me if the tree's taken out, they'll understand. Sure. Yesterday, they'd given up the idea of keeping it anyway, so it can't mean too much to them. Marjorie! Bronco! Come in, uh, Thank you. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. You were just standing here at the window admiring our tree. You yeah. Well... Isn't it beautiful, Unky? Yes, it's nice. But if you could shrewdly persuade somebody to pay for having it removed, you could buy several young trees and spot them wherever you wanted them. Oh, no. No. We want this tree, and we want it right where it is. Well... (laughs) Look, Unky, you can count four bird nests. Yeah, but birds nest in young trees, too. Just think. Birds singing outside the nursery window. Yeah... A tree that may in summer wear A nest of robins in her hair Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, the birds will be back next spring, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, that tree stays. I wonder where this bird will be next spring. <laughs> you know, Marge, someday when the twins are old enough, I'm going to hang a swing from that big gnarled limb. You well... Getting back to younger trees. I can just see the twins now, romping and rolling in its shade. 
And Unky, dozing in a big hammock. Me? Mr. Gildersleeve, that tree has become a part of our family. The twins, Marge and me, you and the tree. Hi, <laughs> yeah, George. What a wonderful family. I'd never consent to having it taken out. No, sir. Neither would I. I'd go to jail first. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, just missed the judge. Yeah, good. You'd have been happy to see him. He has good news. Is the old goat leaving town? No, Mr. Gildersleeve. The town couldn't get along without a good lawyer like the judge. Peavy, Judge Hooker is a bum. I know. He felt so badly about you getting sued, he talked Mr. Boyd out of it. He did? Good old judge. What a fine fellow. <laughs> He said Mr. Bullard was glad to drop the charges. You? He preferred to come over this evening and chop down the tree himself. <laughs> yeah, he'd do it, too. Hey, Peavy, I can't let that happen to the kids' tree. They don't even suspect it's about to happen. You don't care. Yeah, I tried, but I just couldn't bring myself to tell them. There must be some way I can stop Bullard. He must have a soft spot in his heart somewhere. Well, perhaps you should buy him a box of cigars with... Uh, his money. Peavy, I tried to give him his money back, but he wouldn't take it. It's sundown. He'll be over there axe in hand. Well, when it comes to striking the actual blow, it's hard to chop down a fine old tree. I, I had to do it once. I know. You? You know, I felt pretty sentimental about that tree, too. I became smitten with a girl, so I carved our initials in the tree with two hearts entwined. Well, I guess we've all done that, Peavy. When Mrs. Peavy and I got married, I, I cut down the tree. <laughs> Peavy, why didn't you and Mrs. Peavy leave it standing as a memorial? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, the initials on that tree weren't Mrs. Peavy's. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, it may have posed a problem for you, but it's easy for Buller to chop down this tree. He told me about Amy Sue and other girls he courted under it. But he has absolutely no sentiment about it. Well, he may not say so. But a man doesn't forget those things. Yeah, I don't know, Peavy. Time wears memories pretty thin. Look at you. You never think about that girl whose initials you carved on the tree. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> dark. I've been here quite a while and Bullard hasn't shown up. Say, maybe he's changed his mind. Sure, I'll bet that's it. He just wanted me to worry for a day or two. He isn't a bad fellow. Hey, he, his porch light just went out across the street. Here he comes with an axe. What an old meanie. Go <laughs> for you. That you? Yes, Mr. Bullard. Ooh, what a big axe. Uh -huh. Gildersleeve, I see you aren't going to remove the tree, so I'll take care of it. Step back. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bullard. Uh, I've waited. Now stand back. Uh, Mr. Bullard, you can't do this. Oh? I paid you to do the job, but if you won't, I will. I'll start right here. You wait. You don't chop from this side. The tree will fall right across my driveway. Good. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll have to haul it away. Please, Mr. Bullard, chop from the other side. Well... All right. You sure? You chop right here where it says... Hey, what's this? Hmm? What are you looking at? It's a little dark. You can't quite make it out, but there's some carving here. Two hearts entwined. Oh, let me see that. I killed a sleeve. Look at this. Amy Sue loves Rumson? What do you know? After all these years. Little Amy Sue. You're cute. I didn't know she cared so much. Gildersleeve, I probably broke her heart. Well, I can imagine. I was the town's Don Juan, a handsome lad. <laughs> well, 
Let's look around. Maybe we can find some more broken hearts. Here, now, Mr. Bullard, hmm? it's getting dark. We'd better chop down the tree. Here, give me the axe. Gildersleeve, don't you touch this tree. Well, I thought you wanted to cut it down. I'll sue the man who harms one twig of this forest friend. <laughs> yeah, you better take your money back then. Here's your forty dollars. Uh, oh, that. Thank you, Gildersleeve. Amy Sue loved rum. Let me look at that again. Yeah, he... Hey, this carving looks a little fresh. He does? Wait a minute. Aren't these new chips at the bottom of the tree? You well. Hey, yes, Leroy. Have you finished with my jackknife? <laughs> jackknife? Kill the sleeve! Open the door, Leroy! I'm coming home! The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Now you can enjoy two wonderful new versions of famous Philadelphia brand cream cheese. There's Philadelphia brand filled with tangy bits of fresh chives and Philadelphia brand with bits of red pimento all through it. With these two new kinds of fresh-tasting Philadelphia brand cream cheese, you'll fix tempting, delicious snacks and sandwiches more easily than ever. To get genuine Philadelphia brand, be sure you see the Red Craft K on the silvery package. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand, and it's made and guaranteed fresh by Kraft. Look here, Marge. You see where Unc carved on the tree? Oh, that was an awful thing to do to Mr. Bullard, Unky. Yeah, I just outsmarted him, that's all. After all, there was a life at stake. The life of this spreading oak. It's been waiting here 150 years for you and Bronco to build your little home under its protecting branches. That's right, Unky. Marge. Yes? I thought Mr. Gildersleeve said they couldn't find any more carving on the tree. Is this? I guess they didn't look very carefully. Look here, Uncle Mort. Mm, two hearts entwined. Bronco loves Marjorie. Oh, Bronco. Oh, brother. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Gail Gordon, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Question, what's the best way to raid an icebox? The answer, with Kraft's prepared mustard, of course. Because when you add a little Kraft mustard to the sandwich you make, you add a lot of tang. And here's something for you professional icebox raiders to remember. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard with that delicately spiced, mild flavor. Ah, and then there's Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. Then you won't meet up with a dish, but what you'll have just the mustard to add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. Groucho Marx, you bet your life he's next on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The 
Big Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, makes Philadelphia brand cream cheese. The cream cheese that's been famous for quality since 1880. Delicious, creamy white Philadelphia brand is so popular, it outsells all other brands of cream cheese combined. Enjoy it often. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand when you buy. Look for the red Kraft K on the silvery package. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand cream cheese, and it's made by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. Well, it's the evening before Thanksgiving, and Summerfield, like many other places, is blanketed with snow. The great Gildersleeve walked home through it as part of his training for his bout with old Tom Turkey tomorrow. And we might add that the water commissioner is in the pink of condition. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Oh, hello, Auntie. Well, Marjorie. See, that's a tantalizing aroma coming from the kitchen. Uh Uh-huh. Bertie's cooking the turkey for tomorrow. Good. I think I'll go back and take a look at it. Now, Unky, don't start sampling it tonight. No, I won't. That turkey isn't going to get the best of me this time. In fact, I plan to eat light. Light meat. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, Bertie. Evening, Miss Gilsey. Hi, Unk. Leroy, what are you doing over there by the oven? Me? Leroy's watching the turkey, and I'm watching Leroy. (laughs) It's a good idea. Unky's here now, Bertie. You better double the watch. Yes, ma'am. Everybody stand back now. Bertie's going to baste it. Uncle, we got a 24-pound turkey. Say, isn't he a whopper? 24 pounds and five of us to eat it. Oh, boy, that's nearly five pounds apiece. Um, Bronco and I may not be here for dinner, Unky. He's trying to get tickets for the football game tomorrow in Center City. Oh, that's too bad. We'll miss you, my dear. Well, you know how Bronco is about a football game. Yeah. It was such a big dinner. And we ought to invite somebody to share it with us. Leroy, there's a pretty little girl staying at Mr. Bullard's. You mean invite Babs? You, yeah, why not? Yes, why not? The pretty little girl has a pretty mother, Auntie. You well, naturally, if we invite Babs, we should invite her mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give along, Leroy. Let's slip on our overshoes. <laughs> having snow on Thanksgiving, Unc. Yeah, makes things pretty cozy. Right, George, I'm glad I thought about asking Paula and Babs over. What if Mr. Bullard won't let them come? No, Leroy, Mr. Bullard doesn't boss everything. It's none of his business if his sister wants to spend Thanksgiving with friends. Since when has Mr. Bullard considered you a friend? My boy, it's Thanksgiving. It's the time when we should all be friends. Okay. Why, you ring your friend's doorbell, I'll cover you with a snowball from behind this tree. <laughs> Careful, Leroy. You sure make a good target against that poor twite, huh? No, Leroy. Turn sideways and I'll knock the ashes off your cigar. Leroy, watch it. Oop, here it comes. <laughs> Yo, Bullard's window. Run, Bullard! Leroy, you shouldn't run. What's going on out there? Guess I'd better run. What are you kids... Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. A big fat kid. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve, did you break my window? No, but I'll gladly pay for it. Leroy was aiming at me and missed, but I'll pay for it. If he'll aim again at you and hit, I'll pay for it. <laughs> now, Mr. Bullard, I'm sorry it happened. It was an accident. Fortunately, it's just a pane out of the storm window. Gildersleeve, why did you come over in the first place? Well, I came over to see if I couldn't take your sister and little Babs off your hands for Thanksgiving. They're spending the holiday out of town. They are? I didn't know Paula was planning a trip. Should you have been consulted? Well, no, not necessarily. (laughs) But she might have said goodbye. Now that you mention it, she did leave a message for you. You? What was it? She said goodbye. (laughs) So? Goodbye. Wait a minute. Mr. Bullard. You don't mind, I'll talk to you through the peephole. It's cold out there. You well, I brought the broken window. You shouldn't pay for the pain. Gildersleeve, I've been paying for a pain ever since you moved across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Even on Thanksgiving, he's a hard man to like. Pay for 
for breaking his window? No, Leroy. You could take it out of my allowance. Say, a nickel a week? Every other week? <laughs> no, I'll take care of it, my boy. Thanks, Uncle. You're swell. I'm going up now and take my bath without even being sent. Good boy. Yeah, I shouldn't have gone over to Bullard's anyway. You'll never set foot on his porch again. Yeah. Guess I will have to go over and pay him. Someday. Yeah, I'll put the money on a stick and poke it through the people so he can't bite my hand. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve. Yes, Bertie. Will Mr. Bullard's sister and little Babs be here for dinner tomorrow? No, they're out of town, Bertie. Unless Mr. Bullard has them locked up in the attic. Yes, sir. You're fooling, ain't you? Yes, I guess so. Bertie already put their names in the pot. Too bad they can't be here. If Miss, Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco go to that football game, we're going to have more dinner than we know what to do with. Well, Leroy and I will do our best by it. Oh, I'm counting on you and Leroy to eat double. But we're loaded. Of course, a lot of people ain't going to have a big Thanksgiving. Well, true, Bertie. A lot of people just going to squeak by. You we're pretty lucky, Bertie. Yes, sir. I've been thinking about that while I was basting that big turkey, Mr. Kelsey. Yes, Bertie? You remember the little boy that wandered in here from the children's home last Halloween? You, Mike Smith. That's right. The little lost ghost. Cute kid. Say, I wonder what kind of Thanksgiving dinner he's going to have. Oh, you have a good dinner, but he may not have as much as we've got. Bertie, after church in the morning, why don't I drive over and pick up little Mike? Yes, sir. Now we're lining up a real Thanksgiving. Yeah, come to think of it. Thanksgiving is no good if you don't share it. That's what the Indians did. On the first Thanksgiving, they had a lot of food, and they shared it with the pilgrims. Well, the Indians have nothing on the water, Commissioner. The little pilgrim will be the guest of Big Chief Running Water. Yes, sir. <laughs> I get it. Good evening, Judge. Evening, Bertie. Well, Judge, come in. Hello, Gildy. I didn't want to be late for Thanksgiving dinner, so I thought I'd come and spend the night. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you, Horace. But you told me you had an engagement. As a matter of fact, I have. So I dropped by to bring a little sweet meat for your festive board tomorrow. Who? Oh? Here you are, Bertie. Thank you, Judge. What's in this jar? It's cranberry relish that I prepare myself. <laughs> you make cranberry relish, Judge? Yes, indeed. I didn't know you so handy around the kitchen. Well, Bertie, I spend most of my idle hours on culinary experiments. I'm writing a cookbook. Yofer. I think it's nice the judge is so handy in the kitchen. Thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. The judge is a handy man. He spends his working hours with the law book and his idle hours with the cookbook. That's about it, Bertie. Yes, sir. Miss Gillsleeve, that's why the judge can come up with cranberry relish. He spends his working hours with the law book and his idle hours with the cookbook. Yeah, I know, Bertie. Miss Gillsleeve, you know why the judge can come up with cranberry relish? Yes, Bertie. That's right. He spends his working hours with the law book and his idle hours with the cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, you have quite an admirer in Bertie. Well, the feeling is mutual, Gildy. I'm sorry I won't be here to sample Bertie's Thanksgiving dinner. Well, Marjorie and Bronco may not be here either. But I'm inviting little Mike from the children's home. Ah, oh, the little fellow who was lost on Halloween. Yeah, Mike's going to be our guest of honor. <laughs> Gildy, you're a shining example of the spirit of Thanksgiving. Well, that's not all I planned to do. I went over to invite Mrs. Winthrop and Babs, but the old Bullard said they were out of town. Oh, so Rumson is spending Thanksgiving alone? I didn't ask him, Judge. I don't care where he spent it. Well, I know Rumson Bullard is difficult at times, but he's a lonely man. I think he wants to be alone. I'm not so sure, Gilda. Perhaps we just don't understand him. I know I don't. Be that as it may, at a time when the peoples of the world are divided, suspicious, and working at cross-purposes... It seems the least we can do is set an example of amity and accord here at home. You have. Chances are the world could achieve more harmony around the Thanksgiving table than around the conference table. You're probably right, Judge. I hadn't looked at it that way. You're right, George. I'll invite Bullard tomorrow. <laughs> Well, 
It's nice of you to join us for dinner today, Mike. It's nice of you to invite me, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> you will have a lot of fun. Yeah, I didn't think to ask Mrs. Foster when I should bring you home. Just take me back when I'm good and full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's plenty to eat, all right. Bertie has a turkey almost as big as you are. I don't know if I can eat that much. <laughs> well, I'll help you. You ought to be a big help. <laughs> I wonder how he meant that. A lot of us kids are going out for dinner today. You're good. Boy, I like Thanksgiving. How many times a year does it come? Well, only once, Mike. But Christmas will be here soon. Yeah, that's when Santa Claus comes. Yeah, I'll bet you get a lot of presents. Yeah, Bobby's even getting a mother and father for Christmas. You? Who's Bobby? He's my friend. Yeah, I see. Well, here we are. Remember this house? This is where you found me when I got lost. <laughs> That's right. I sure was dopey to get lost. Well, if you had to get lost, we're glad you picked our house. Thank you. Oh, before we go in, Mike, let's go across the street and ask someone else to dinner. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to invite the man who lives in this big house. He's all alone today. But that big house, why is he all alone? You well, Mike, you know how it is. Do I? You well, this man's a little difficult to understand. It seems he hasn't many friends. Why? Well, sometimes he isn't as nice to people as he could be. But we're going to be nice to him. You see, I feel sorry for Mr. Bullard. Is that his name? Yes, yeah, that's his name. Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Good morning, Mr. Bullard. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bullard, I'd like you to meet a little friend of mine, Mike Smith. Well, how do you do, young man? Hello, Mr. Bullard. Uh, little Mike's from the children's home. He's having dinner with us. Yeah, turkey. Oh, splendid. I hope you enjoy your dinner, Mike. Uh, Mr. Bullard? Yes? I'd like you to join us, if you will. Me? Well, that's very thoughtful of you. You yeah, Mr. Bullard, it's Thanksgiving and... You're all alone. Yeah, and Mr. Gildersleeve says you don't have very, ma very many friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh? Uh, well, uh, what I meant was... For your information, Gildersleeve, I have countless friends. I'm having dinner today at my club. Yeah, Mr. Bullard, let's not have another misunderstanding. I really wish you'd come with us. Yeah, Mr. Gildersleeve feels sorry for you. <laughs> oh, is that so? Gildersleeve, I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. You enjoy your dinner, I'll enjoy mine. Good day. <laughs> Mike, what are you going to do with a fellow like that? Mrs. Foster would send him to bed without any dinner. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Want to make luscious, rich frostings and smooth, perfect fudge every time? Fudge and frostings that are bound to be perfect, that need no cooking? You can do it a brand new way, a way you've probably never thought of. You do it with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. That's right. Philadelphia brand cream cheese is the magic ingredient that makes fudge and frosting more delicious more consistently perfect than ever before. Have a pencil and paper handy, and in just a minute I'll tell you where to write for your free, that's right, free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for making wonderful fudge and frostings with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Now, maybe you're thinking that fudge and frosting made with cream cheese would have a cheese flavor, but they don't. Wonderful Philadelphia brand cream cheese gives you fudge and frosting with a perfect delicate, rich taste, because Philadelphia cream cheese is made with fine milk and thick cream. This fudge and frosting has a special freshness, too, because Philadelphia brand cream cheese is guaranteed fresh by Kraft, and Philadelphia brand gives fudge and frosting a truly marvelous texture, never grainy, never too hard, never too soft, but always smooth. Just be sure you use genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Look for the red Kraft K that's on every silvery package of genuine Philadelphia brand. Remember, genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese is made only by Kraft. 
Now, to get your free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for Philly fudge and frostings, simply drop a postcard to Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. That address again, Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. Right tonight. <laughs> Well, the great Gildersleeve has caught the Thanksgiving spirit. He invited little Mike from the children's home. He even invited Big Bad Bullard to share his turkey, but Bullard insisted on not coming. Now it looks like there will be several empty places at the table. Uncle Mort. Yes, Marjorie? I'm leaving now. Bronco got tickets for the football game. Oh? Uh Uh-huh. He's down getting gas, and I'm going to meet him out front. We're a little late. Well, sorry you can't be with us for dinner. But before you go, I want you to meet little Mike. Mike? You, yeah, Mike? He's in here with me testing the turkey, Mr. Gillsleeve. You don't spoil his dinner, Bertie. No, sir. You better send him in. I want Marjorie to see him. Who did you want to see me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, Mike, this is my niece, Marjorie. Hello, Mike. Hello. What's a niece? Uh, well, in this case, she's somebody I'm uncle to. Are you here for dinner, too? Well, I live here, but I can't be here for dinner. You'll excuse me, won't you? Well, I don't know. She and her husband are going to a football game, Mike. Would you rather see a football game than eat turkey? No, but our college is playing. Isn't anybody going to eat Thanksgiving dinner with us? Well, Leroy will be here. He's over on the hill with his sled. What about Mr. Bullard, Unky? He expressed regrets. Bullard style. He's all alone. (laughs) We feel sorry for him. You feel sorry for it. Okay. Oh, oh, that's Bronco. Well, Mike, I'm awfully glad you came. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Marjorie. <laughs> Mike, it's just plain Marjorie. But you've got a husband. That makes you Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll still be Marjorie to you. Goodbye, Anki. Ta-ta, my dear. What'll we do now, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, it's quite a while until dinner. And I'm out of cigars. Why don't we drop by Mr. Peavy's and then join Leroy for a sled ride? Okay. Shall we go back and help Bertie taste the turkey before we go? Well, I guess we could take a little sliver where it won't show. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Yeah, I need some cigars, Peavy. I took a chance on your being open today. Well, I'm closing in a little while. Your uh, usual brand? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Peavy, aren't you going to say hello to Mike? Is she here? Yeah. Well, I didn't see you down there below the counter. Hello, Mikey. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Uh, here, Mike. Let me lift you up on one of these stools. Uh, I can climb up. He's having Thanksgiving dinner with us, Petey. Oh, you don't say. You care to have a soda on the house, Mike? No, I guess it is for your dinner. Huh? He didn't give me a chance to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better save up. We have a big dinner to take care of. There aren't many people eating with Mr. Gildersleeve and me. Well, Marjorie and Bronco are going to the game over in Center City, Petey. Well, if it was 40 years ago, I'd go out there and sit in the snow myself. Mr. Gildersleeve, can I whisper something? You out? Excuse us, Peavy. Very well. What is it? Why don't we ask Mr. Peavy over for dinner? That's a nice thought. I'm sure his dinner's all planned, but why don't you ask him? Okay. Mr. Peavy? Oh, am I included now? Yes. Would you like to come over and help us eat our turkey? Well, I'll be eating at home, Mike, but thank you just the same. That's all right. I thought you might be lonesome. Mike, Mr. Peavy has a wife at home. He doesn't get lonesome. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Last Thanksgiving, I would have taken you up on the invitation. Oh? Just happened that I was alone. We'd planned on having a turkey, but Mrs. Peavy went to visit her mother instead. Wish she'd visit, wish she'd visit her mother again this year. How's that? So you'd be lonesome enough to eat with us. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Peavy, Mike is bound and determined to fill every place at the table. Hey, isn't that Mr. Bullard parking the big car out front? Yes, it is. Uh, he's coming in here. He's still alone. Why don't we give him another chance to eat with us? No, Mike. Maybe he wants to be coaxed. I do sometimes. I even get under the bed and won't come out. <laughs> well, all right. Just for you, Mike, I'll ask him once more. Oh, uh, how do you do, Phoebe? Well, hello, Mr. Bullard. Hello, Mike. Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, hello. <laughs> what a cold fish. Go ahead, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ask him. Ask me what? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Bullard, if you'd care to reconsider, the invitation to dinner is still good. Well, thank you, Gildersleeve, but I have plans of my own. Well, we'd love to have you come to our house. Gildersleeve, stop nagging at me to come to your house. You're all right. You have your dinner, and I'll have my party at the club. Oh, uh, Peavy, I want five pounds of your best after-dinner mints. My, my. Five pounds? You must be having a big party. Oh, yes, yes, I am. Thanksgiving is a day to gather your friends around you. And although I may not be considered popular by one of my neighbors, I have many friends. Uh, Peavy, make that ten pounds of mint. Ten pounds? <laughs> I'm glad I opened up today. Stuffed shirt. Must be inviting his whole club. How much will that be, Phoebe? Well, it comes to seven dollars, but of course it's a lot of mint. You must not be having anything for dinner but mints. <laughs> Mike. Uh, there you are, Phoebe. These mints should be the crowning touch after my friends and I enjoy a hearty meal. We're having vichyssoise, a tossed green salad with anchovies, roast pheasant, golden pheasant. You, yeah, Mike. <laughs> wild rice, of course, candied yams, and for dessert, flaming plum pudding. Mm, sounds mighty good. Mr. Gildersleeve, maybe he'd invite us to his dinner. <laughs> right, come with me. We have to pick up Leroy. Thanks for picking me up, Unc. Well, it'll soon be time for turkey. Did I work up an appetite sliding on the hill? I'm hungry, too. Me, too. Three of us will have a fine time. Isn't Mr. Bullard coming? No. Bullard's invited a lot of people out to his club for a fancy dinner. Vichy Schwarz. <laughs> Leroy, it was nice of you to take me down on the hill, on your sled. Oh, uh -huh. that's okay. Forget it. I like you, Leroy. You do? Why? I don't know. I guess it's like Mrs. Foster says. She says little boys always want to be like big boys. Well, I... I am getting pretty big, I guess. Uh, Mike, someday you'll be as big as Leroy. I don't know if I'll ever get that big. <laughs> you know, Mike, I sort of like you, too. Thank you. Hey, we're coming close to where I live. Yeah, that's your home, my boy. Hey, Uncle, stop the car. You are, Leroy. Just stop the car. Well, you're all right. Why are we stopping here? I haven't had dinner yet. Uh, yes, Leroy, why are we stopping? Unc, could we get some more little kids like Mike and take them home to dinner? Leroy, that's a wonderful idea. Oh, boy. Leroy, can I go in and see who's left? Sure. Caddy, Unc. You bet. Run on in, Mike, and round up a car full. We'll wait. Oh, boy, I've been wanting to invite somebody. Yeah, what a fine little fellow. Yeah, he's okay. In Leroy. Yeah. There's another fine fellow sitting right next to me. Oh, heck. Gosh. <laughs> Gee, Unc, that's the way to have Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. Invite people to dinner who'll appreciate it. The heck with Bullard. Let him have his big dinner with all his fine friends. Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve, Leroy. Yeah, I didn't expect you back so soon, Mike. Where are all the kids, Mike? They've all gone out. They have? But do you know who's sitting in there with no place to go? Who? Mr. Bullard. Mr. Bullard. <laughs> Come on out, Mr. Bullard. They know you're in there. Well, what do you know? You imagine that. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Gildersleeve. You're right. Hi. Hey, Mr. Bullard, you're the last man I expected to see here. Oh, well, I thought I'd come over and take some of the children to dinner. You're not the only one who can entertain friends. And, uh, well, good day. I think I'll take my mints and go home. You, wait a minute. Mr. Bullard. Yes? yes? I thought you were going to have a big party at your club. 
Well, I intended to, Gildersleeve, but a lot of pushy people like you have taken all the children. Well, we didn't get our share. There's room for one more. You mean... Uh... Yeah, how many times do we have to ask you? <laughs> well, Come on, Mr. Bullard. I... I'll get in the back seat with you. All right, all right. Thank you, Leroy. Thank you. Right, George Bullard, this is a fine idea. I'm so glad you're going to be with us. Thank you, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Don't cry, Mr. Bullard. You have more friends than you thought you had. Yes, sir. There's something about Thanksgiving. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Have you tasted the two delicious new versions of Philadelphia brand cream cheese? Now you can get delicately rich Philadelphia cream cheese filled with spicy bits of chives and Philadelphia cream cheese with pieces of red pimento all through. Imagine the delicious variety of easy snacks and sandwiches you can make with these two new kinds of Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Try them tomorrow. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand, and it's made and guaranteed fresh by Kraft. This is Gildersleeve again. Thanksgiving is a holiday we Americans cherish. It's a part of our national tradition. And more than that, it shows how our way of life in this country has always been linked so closely with religion. These days, I think we all realize how important it is that we strengthen our faith for ourselves and our children. Take someone to church this week. You'll both be richer for it. Good night. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Tommy Reddig, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. In a sandwich, what do you like best? Say, in a cold beef sandwich, a cheese sandwich, egg salad, salami, what do you like best? Well, if you've ever tried it, I bet you'll say Kraft's prepared mustard. Because when you add a little Kraft mustard, you add a lot of tang. In fact, there are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. And remember, the next time you make a sandwich, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. <laughs> Groucho Marx, you bet your life. He's next on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, makes Philadelphia brand cream cheese, the cream cheese that's been famous for quality since 1880. 
delicious, creamy white Philadelphia brand is so popular, it outsells all other brands of cream cheese combined. Enjoy it often. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand when you buy. Look for the red Kraft K on the silvery package. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand cream cheese, and it's made by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. Well, the great Gildersleeve is facing the same situation every parent faces sooner or later. Leroy is growing up. Nowadays, it seems the boy's pants are too short and his shoes too small almost before the water commissioner gets the bills for them. And that isn't the only way Leroy is branching out. Instead of living in a wild western world of pistol shots and galloping hoofs, he likes to gallop off after dinner and hang around with the boys. See you later, Unc. Leroy, where are you going tonight? Just out of the corner. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing, my boy. Well, what's going on down there? I'm just meeting Tiger and the guys. You Tiger? Tiger Davis, a big wheel on the football team. You're not going to play football under the streetlight? No, we're just going to stand around. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Well, nothing, I'm sure. But it's a school night. What about your homework? I'll be back early. Can I go now? Tiger's waiting. Yeah, I suppose so. But be back by 8 o'clock at the latest. Sure. What's wrong with that? That's a new expression. I wonder where he picked that up. It isn't that I want to check up on Leroy. There's no harm in knowing what kind of company he keeps. I wouldn't be a good parent if I didn't. Yeah, I don't see him hanging around the corner anywhere. Getting close to 8 o'clock. You think I'll stop in and ask Peavy if he's seen it? Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Hey, Peavy, you haven't seen anything of Leroy and his crowd, have you? Uh, not yet, but some of them usually drop in about this time on their way home. Phoebe, I don't like the idea of boys Leroy's age drifting around after dinner. Well, if it's any comfort to you, I've watched them come and go around this corner for 40 years. And I can remember only one young man who didn't turn out as well as I thought he was going to. Well, who was that, Phoebe? <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't agree with that. But uh, running a drugstore, you do get a chance to observe the kids. What do they do every evening? Well, they just stand around and talk about this and that. All evening? Well, it's the awkward age, Mr. Gildersleeve. It takes all evening to find something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, that sounds innocent enough. Peavy, what do you know about this Tiger Davis? Well, Tiger has quite a reputation. Oh, what kind? Well, you can eat more banana splits than anybody in town. Yo. <laughs> Here they come now. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Hello, boy. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Unc, this is my old pal, Tiger. He and I are pals. Hello, Tiger. Hiya, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... Hey, Gildersleeve. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you were the water commissioner, but I didn't know your last name, Dad. Peavy? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tiger, it's uh, nice to meet you at last. Leroy's talked a lot about you. Yeah. Well, when you're the first-string quarterback on the football team, everybody wants to know you. I see. Were you out looking for me, Unc? Well, not exactly. In fact, definitely not. Now that you mention it, you said you'd be home by 8 o'clock, and it's five minutes after. Well, I would have been home by now, Unc, but there was a keen fight down the street. You don't say. You fight? Sure. Le What's wrong with that? Leroy, have you been in a fight? Heck no. It was in a store window. Television. Yo, television. Well, sure. What's wrong with that? So that's where Leroy picked it up. Well, we better be getting on home, Leroy. I'll walk on ahead with Tiger, Unc. Yeah, all right. Good night, Tiger. Good night. Good night, boy. Good night. It's after eight, Peavy. Are you going to close up? No, I may stay open another hour. Till nine o'clock? Sure, what's wrong with that? Peavy, <laughs> you too? More coffee? 
coffee, Mr. Gilsey? You're about half a cup, Bertie. Thank you. Yes, sir. How about you, Miss Marjorie? Oh, no, thanks, Bertie. I'll wait for Bronco. Yes, ma'am. Sorry I'm a little late with breakfast, but Leroy was in such a hurry for me to pack his lunch. Yeah, he left like a shot out of a gun again. <laughs> he even went off and forgot his book. You know, Marjorie, I'm a little concerned about Leroy. I hate to think what his report card will look like. Leroy's smart about everything else. I don't know why he, he don't get grades like little Babs across the street. She's a grade A student. Mm. Leroy's a grade D minus. <laughs> well, some boys just find it hard to study, Yankee. I know Bronco did until he started studying nights with somebody else. You? Who? Me. Yeah. <laughs> right, George, that's a thought. I wonder if we could get Leroy interested in studying with Babs. Well, do you think you could get Babs interested in studying with Leroy? Yeah. Well, she seems to like Leroy. And Leroy's a total loss around girls. Look her out the window, Unky. Babs is on her way to school now. You? Yes. <laughs> She's such a cute girl. Yeah, I think I'll run out and ask her if she'll do her homework with Leroy. Excuse me, Margie. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to hurry before she gets away. Good luck, Unky. Yeah, I don't like to ask favors of Babs. But she'll do this for Leroy. Sure. Babs? Babs? You calling me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, I'd like to have a word with you. I'm on my way to school. You, well, I'll walk to the corner with you. That's a very pretty dress you're wearing this morning. It isn't a dress. It's a skirt and sweater. Yeah, well, anyway, it's pretty. Thank you. Babs, I hear you're an A student. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I was wondering, Babs, if you'd care to come over this evening and do your homework with Leroy. Why don't you help him with his homework? Me? You can do ninth grade stuff, can't you? Well, I went to school, of course, but that was some time ago. Yeah, I really think you're the one who can help Leroy. Mr. Gildersleeve, Leroy is beyond help. Good. When, when I try to talk to him, he just hangs his head and kicks the ground and giggles. Yeah, well, Babs, he's at the awkward age. He certainly is. Young girls seem to have more poise than boys. Leroy's just growing up. He's still shy. So when you see him, why don't you suggest coming over and studying tonight? Yeah, I think I know what you'll get for an answer. So do I. He'll hang his head and go... <laughs> <laughs> I guess she's right. Leroy's a bigger problem than I thought. clock. They haven't gotten out all the water bills. Around the end of the month, I wish the department didn't have so many customers. Come in. Hello, Gildy. Hello, Judge. Why, Gildy, you're working. You bet. I have to send out these water bills. Well, I can speed that up for you. You how? When you come to mine, just toss it in the wastebasket. <laughs> <laughs> You old goat. I just saw Leroy on the street with his sidekick, Tiger Davis. You did? Yeah, they were on their way home from school. Leroy was carrying Tiger's books, and Tiger was riding Leroy's bike. Oh, my goodness. Judge, what do you know about this Tiger? He seems to be a popular boy. I know his father. He's with the Internal Revenue Department. At least he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the boy's all right. But I'd like to see Leroy spend more evenings at home, studying. Gildy, have you ever thought of inviting Tiger into your home? Well, no. In addition to opening your home to Leroy's friends, you'll have an opportunity to observe the company he keeps. Not that I think Leroy is forming the wrong friendships. Judge, that's a fine idea. I'll have Leroy invite him out. I would. Sure. Is Tiger and Leroy say, what's wrong with that, Dad? What? In nothing, Judge. <laughs> You're just not hip, that's all. Oh. <laughs> Is Leroy out again this evening, Unky? He'll be back in a few minutes, Marjorie. He's bringing Tiger to the house tonight. They're coming over here? Yeah, my idea. A shrewd little plan to keep them at home. And Leroy is delighted. But, Unky, what'll they do here? 
Oh, we'll popcorn, toast marshmallows. Anki, you seem to forget. Leroy is way past that stage. Yeah, Margie, don't worry. I'll keep things rolling. Right in, Tiger, old pal. Here, here they are now. I'm going to run upstairs, Anki. This is your party. Unk? In here, Leroy. Hello, Tiger. Hiya, Mr. Gildersleeve. Nice of you to invite me over. Well, glad you came. What are we going to do, Unk? Well, if anybody gets hungry, we might toast some marshmallows. Toast marshmallows? <laughs> oh, you have a great sense of humor, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with toasting marshmallows? Ah, kid stuff. Have you got a ping pong table, Leroy? We can play ping pong. Well, gosh, no. You well, you can't play ping pong, but Leroy can play the piano. The piano? What goes with you and the piano, Junior? Well, gee, gosh, I used to play, but I haven't touched it since I was a kid. You, my goodness. I got them into the house now. What'll I do with them? I'll get it! What was that? <laughs> yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. Well, Babs, I didn't think you were coming over this evening. Uh, come in. I decided to help Leroy with his homework. Good. Hi, Babs. Hello, Leroy. What's this about homework? Uh, Babs, this is Tiger Davis. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, I've seen you at school. I haven't seen you. What's this about homework? Leroy, this morning your uncle asked me to come over and help you with your homework. Oh, Unc! Didn't you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, yes. Leroy, you should study more. Study with a girl? Leroy. Well, Tiger, I'm being framed. I don't study with girls. No? What's wrong with that? What? Get with it, Junior. She's got it. <laughs> Leroy, I didn't ask to study with you And if that's the way you feel, I'll just go home yeah, But Babs Gosh, I hadn't planned on studying right now uh, <clears throat> Junior Yeah, Tiger? Well, if you're not going to study with Babs uh, I think I will Yeah? Tiger, we can't study together We don't take the same subjects Well, I'm shifty, I'll change my course <laughs> Ooh, you football players your brother. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Perfectly obvious that Leroy doesn't want to study with me. Yeah, but Babs. <clears throat> well, I uh, I have to leave early, too. <laughs> so, uh, see you home, Babs. Thank you. Gosh, Tiger, you're not leaving. Junior, the girl has books to carry. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry, Leroy. What's there to be sorry for? You'll soon find out who your pals are. And anybody who studies with girls is no pal of mine. Well, perhaps it all turned out for the best, my boy. Now you can buckle down to your homework. Leroy? Leroy? Yeah? Where are you going? Upstairs to study? I'm going to bed. How do you figure a boy his age? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Here's a wonderful new way you can make rich frosting and a grand fudge every time. Frosting and fudge that's never grainy, never too hard, never too soft, but always creamy smooth. Frosting and fudge that's easy to make without cooking. You do it with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Have a pencil and paper handy, and in just a minute, I'll tell you where to write for your free, that's right, free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for making wonderful fudge and frosting with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Philadelphia brand gives fudge and frosting a wonderful, delicate, rich taste because this cream cheese is made with lots of fine milk and thick cream. And Philadelphia cream cheese keeps fudge and frosting moist and fresh tasting longer. You know... Philadelphia brand cream cheese is guaranteed fresh by Kraft. So always be sure you use genuine Philadelphia brand. Look for the red Kraft K that's on every silvery package of genuine Philadelphia brand to help you pick the real thing at a glance. Remember, genuine Philadelphia brand is made only by Kraft. Now to get your free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for delicious, 
Philly Fudge and Frosting, just right to Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. That address again, Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. Right tonight. <laughs> Well, in order to get Leroy to concentrate on his homework, the great Gildersleeve invited pretty little Babs over to help him study. But since Leroy's idol, Tiger Davis, concentrated on Babs, Leroy hasn't been able to concentrate on anything. You know, all I started out to do was to get Leroy to spend more time at home. Now I can't get him to go anywhere. Yeah, I'll go up and talk to the boy again. It's getting to be a full-time job. I wonder how my grandfather ever lived to be 90 after raising a family of eight. Leroy? Yeah? It's your old uncle. Can I come in? I guess so. What are you doing, my boy? Say, you're studying. Sure, what else is there to do? Well, that's a fine idea. But you might turn the book right side up. Uncle, why did you have to invite Babs over the other night? Well, frankly, I was a little concerned about your homework. You and Tiger were wasting too many evenings downtown. I wonder what Tiger sees in girls. You, well, uh, Leroy, that's what happens to boys sooner or later. They start noticing girls. Sometimes it happens almost overnight. I never thought of that happen to a regular guy like Tiger. I guess I won't see him anymore. He's gone. <laughs> now, Leroy, you mustn't feel you've lost Tiger as a friend It just happens you're a little behind him, that's all I am? Yeah, what I mean is, he's growing up a little faster than you Well, I don't believe it, but he says his dad has given him a razor for Christmas Well, Leroy, it won't be too long before you'll need a razor Yeah, I can see you and Tiger being pals again Going to school dances, maybe double dating Yeah I guess a guy just can't fight it. <laughs> well, it's really nothing to worry about. I've gone with girls for many years, and I know. Nice girls are really pretty nice. I guess I'd better do my homework, Unc. Yeah, yes. Well, I'll say good night. Good night, my boy. Good night. The way my face feels, I won't need a razor for years. <laughs> I think I'll check it in the mirror. Peach fuzz. <laughs> well, what if I did have whiskers? I still wouldn't want to go running around with girls. I don't want to see any more of a tiger either. Big shot. Calling me Junior. Well, Bab seems to like him. If I don't do something pretty soon, nobody will have anything to do with me. Maybe if I tried, I could have fun going with girls. Junior. Leroy Forrester, grow up. If Tiger can do it, so can I. Overnight. Starting tomorrow. I think I'll wear my Sunday suit to school. Everyone around here thinks I'm still a kid. I'll show them. I'll show them if it kills me. <laughs> Gilsleeve, you want me to hold breakfast for Leroy? Yeah, I suppose so, Bertie. He's a little late this morning. Yes, ma'am. Unky, mm. what's happened to Leroy? Now he doesn't see Tiger, Babs, or anybody. Here he comes now. Yeah, let's not mention Babs or girls. Leroy's a little sensitive on the subject. Poor Leroy. Yeah, come on, Leroy, we're waiting. Thank you, Unc. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Bertie. Good morning, Leroy. Leroy, you're wearing your good suit. Sure. What's wrong with that? Do I smell shaving lotion on you, my boy? I borrowed a little of yours to get my face used to it. I may be shaving before very long. Maybe by Christmas. <laughs> well, it won't be too long. Glad to see you're feeling better this morning, my boy. Yeah, I feel great. You look very nice. 
You think you should be wearing your good suit to school? Uh, you have clean blue jeans, Leroy. Well, jeans are okay, but I might as well get some use out of this suit. I'll be growing out of it soon. Oh, yes, yes, you will. Leroy, why do you keep watching the window? I don't want to miss Babs when she starts for school. What's this? You're going to walk to school with Babs? Get with it, Marge. The girl has books to carry. <laughs> oh. oh. She's coming out of her house now. Excuse me. Uh, Leroy, you haven't finished your breakfast. Well, Leroy, you haven't touched your prune. I don't eat those anymore. Am I a shoes dunk? Yeah, I suppose so, my boy. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Leroy. So long. See you at dinner. Now I've seen everything. That ain't like Leroy leaving the table to walk to school with a girl. It is quite a change in the boy. Yes, sir. I know he don't like prunes, but I thought he preferred prunes to girls. (laughs) Wait a minute, Babs. What for? I'm walking you to school. Are you? Here, give me your books. Leroy, let go. I'll carry my own books. You can't carry your own books. The guy carries the book. Get with it. (laughs) Oh, uh, all right. Uh, how about meeting you after school and carrying them back? What, Leroy? And, uh, how about coming over tonight and doing homework? Leroy Forrester, the other night you said you didn't want to study with me. Well, I'm shifty. I can change my course. Leroy, what's happened to you? Are you wearing perfume? Shaving lotion. <laughs> Shaving lotion? <laughs> Leroy, why don't you act your age? That's just what I'm doing. <laughs> what's so funny? What are you laughing at? Oh, you're acting so silly. Just like that Tiger David. <laughs> you mean you don't like Tiger Davis? He thinks he's so smart. <laughs> but... But I saw... He isn't my type at all. He isn't? Shall we cross the street? Okay. What are you stopping here for? Leroy, boys old enough to use shaving lotion usually help girls across the street. What? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, sure. Let me take your hand. Thank you. It's okay. What's the... What kind of boys are your type... If Tiger isn't. Well, I like boys who are hmm, more natural. Like who? Well, right now, you're sort of natural. I don't feel natural. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy. Yeah, Babs? We're across the street and you're still holding my hand. I know. <laughs> no, those children over there are giggling at us Oh, let them giggle They'll grow up someday Overnight <laughs> oh, That boy I thought I had him straightened out He's neglecting his homework again this evening well, you're not on the street corner. I'd better check with Peavy. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gallisley. <laughs> Peavy, have you seen Leroy? Shh. He's sitting over there in the booth. Who? With that tiger again? No, this time he's with a little deer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Babs. Well, he should be doing his homework. He's doing his homework. He is? They've been studying all evening with the same algebra book and the same soda. <laughs> well, as long as he's studying, I won't interrupt it. They wouldn't hear you anyway. They're concentrating pretty hard. You? I haven't been listening, you understand, but when I went over to ask if they wanted to order, Bab said something about pie. Pie? And Leroy said pie was 3.1416, but I don't have any of that kind of pie. <laughs> TV, that's algebra, and you know it. <laughs> You're right, George. I'm pretty happy about this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Here's Tiger. Yeah. oh Hiya, Mr. Gillisleeve. Is that Leroy in the booth? Uh, yes, but... Hey, Leroy! Yeah? 
Where you been? Come on, we're meeting the guys in the corner. Meet him yourself, Junior. Can't you see I'm with a girl? <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Now, for a greater variety of delicious, easy snacks and sandwiches, get two wonderful new versions of Philadelphia brand cream cheese. There's delicate, rich Philadelphia brand filled with tangy bits of French chives and Philadelphia brand with tiny pieces of red pimento all through. To help you pick the real thing at a glance... Look for the Red Craft K that's on every package of genuine Philadelphia brand. Remember, genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese is made only by Kraft. Look what I found back of the couch, Bertie. Leroy's cap pistol. Yes. Yeah. His hop-along Cassidy gun belt and holster. Well, Bertie, I guess we can put these away with his baby shoes. Our cowboy has hung up his guns. <laughs> I hate to see him grow up. Well, it'll be a relief, too, in a way. No more crazy kid ideas. Won't have to suffer through any more of those silly fads. Yo-yos, water pistols... What's this? Fab's got some keen records. All the kids are getting record players. Can I get one, can I, Unc, Unc? Uh, kids don't change. They just get more expensive. <laughs> Good night, folks. Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gil Stratton, Barbara Whiting, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Today, the Kraft Foods Company salutes the 4-H clubs, who are this week celebrating their 30th anniversary at a meeting in Chicago attended by boys and girls from every state in the Union and from Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. Kraft congratulates these junior citizens on their agricultural and homemaking achievements and on the principles expressed in this solemn pledge made by every 4-H club member. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, my health to better living, for my club, my community, and my country. <laughs> Groucho Marx, you bet your life. He's next on NBC.